The Lineage of Yazid In order to understand Yazid, it is imperative to take a glance at his family and lineage. His father was Muawiyah and his father was Abu Sufyan. They belonged to the tribe known as Bani Umayyah, a tribe which was constantly locked in battle against the Holy Prophet and the message of Islam. Abu Sufyan himself was among the staunchest of enemies of the Holy Prophet. He was involved in major battles against the Holy Prophet like the battles of Badr, Uhud and Khandaq and many of the early Muslims were martyred fighting against his forces. Abu Sufyan's own wife had such hatred for the Prophet's family that she had the Holy Prophet's own uncle, Hamza, killed in battle, his chest cut open and his raw liver brought to her so that she could literally chew upon it. This is the woman who would give birth to Muawiyah and according to history, the Prophet once saw Abu Sufyan riding his camel with his son Muawiyah and his grandson Yazid walking, one in front and one behind the camel. The Prophet said may God curse the rider, the one in front and the one in the back. It was only when the Holy Prophet conquered Mecca that Abu Sufyan superficially announced himself as a Muslim. Muawiyah would follow in his father's footsteps, but he would do it wearing the guise of being a Muslim. He created dissension between the Muslims and led the Battle of Safin against Imam Ali, the first Imam and the fourth rightly guided Khalif. In 646 AD, 25 years after the Prophet migrated to Medina, Yazid was born to this family, which was prominent for its opposition to Islam. Of all the members of Bani Umayyah, Yazid would prove to be the most extreme in his enmity towards Islam. Early Life and Character According to historians and scholars of Islam, both Sunni and Shia, Yazid lived a life of extravagance which was completely at odds with the Islamic way of life. It is said that during his father's reign, Yazid went to Mecca for the Hajj. When he reached Medina, he sat at a wine drinking gathering and recited poetry. Shia scholars are unanimous on Yazid's immoral character and Sheikh Abdullah Nasir notes that several prominent Sunni scholars have also stated that Yazid was an oppressive and tyrannical leader who conducted the affairs of Muslims with force and deceit. He is described as a pathological drunkard and violator of the sanctified ordinances. Ibn Kathir also stated, Yazid was notorious for his love of music and liquors, his illicit friendship with singing boys and girls. There was not a single day that he woke up not intoxicated. In fact, Yazid was known as a notorious drunkard whose poetry in praise of liquor was of public knowledge. It is for this reason that it is argued that Yazid posed a greater threat than his predecessors, for they had, at the very least, apparently practiced Islam and in the eyes of the public, stayed within the boundaries of Islamic law. Yazid, on the other hand, was such a person who flaunted his immoral behavior and proudly went against the teachings of Islam. If such an individual were to become the Khalif, not only the Muslim world, but the message of Islam itself would be in jeopardy. Nomination as Khalif After years of infighting, Yazid's father, Muawiyah, signed a peace treaty with Imam Hassan, the grandson of the Holy Prophet. Muawiyah became the Khalif over the Muslims. One of the specified terms of the peace treaty was that Muawiyah would not nominate a successor. However, in 676 AD, Muawiyah broke the terms and nominated Yazid as his heir. Thus, Yazid's appointment as the Khalif was the first hereditary succession in Islamic history. None of the previous Khalifs had become the ruler due to their father being the Khalif before them. And this was not the Islamic way. But Yazid rose to the throne solely by virtue of the fact that his father, Muawiyah, chose him as his heir. Ibn Hazm in chapter 11 of his book has categorized Yazid as secular, who was oppressive and devoid of any legitimacy. Before his death, Muawiyah had ordered the governor of Medina, Marwan ibn Hakam, to inform the people of Medina of Muawiyah's decision. But Marwan faced resistance to this announcement, especially from Hussein ibn Ali, who was the grandson of the Holy Prophet, Abdullah ibn Umar, who was the son of the second Khalif, Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr, who was the son of the first Khalif, and Abdullah ibn Zubair, who was a cousin of Aisha, wife of the Holy Prophet. All four of these held considerable influence over the masses. Potentially, they were powerful political adversaries. Imam Hussein, in particular, being the grandson of the Holy Prophet, the son of Imam Ali, and the brother of Imam Hassan, had the caliber to unite the Muslims under one banner and oppose Yazid. Yazid immediately took oaths of allegiance from the various governors. He wrote to the governor of Medina, Walid ibn Utba, also a descendant of Abu Sufyan, saying, be tough with Al-Hussein, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr, 
and Abdullah ibn Zubair, when you will require them to swear the oath of allegiance to me. Whoever refuses, kill him and send his severed head to me. Thus, Imam Hussein was summoned to pay allegiance in a semi-private meeting. But when asked to pledge allegiance to Yazid, Imam Hussein responded that giving his allegiance in private would be insufficient. Such a thing should be done in public. Marwan demanded that Imam Hussein should be detained until he swore allegiance, urging Walid ibn Utba to confine the man till he either swears the oath of allegiance or you kill him. At this point, it is reported that Imam Hussein retorted, you son of the blue woman, prostitute, will you kill me or will he? You have surely lied and sinned. Then Imam Hussein directed his attention to Al-Walid and said, O Amir, we are members of the household of the Prophet, the substance of the divine message, and the ones visited by the angels. Allah initiates by us and so does he conclude. Yazid is a wine drinker, a killer of the prohibitive soul, a man who commits sins in the open. A man like me does not swear the oath of allegiance to a man like him. But we will see in the morning and so will you. We shall see and so will you as to who among us is more worthy of the Caliphate. Having clearly denounced Yazid and challenged him, Imam Hussein left the meeting without paying allegiance and abdicated to Mecca. Dissatisfied with Walid's failure in regards to Imam Hussein, Yazid replaced Walid ibn Utbah with Amr ibn Said. Ibn Umar, Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr, and Abdullah ibn Abbas, who had previously denounced Muawiyah's nomination of Yazid, now paid allegiance to Yazid. Very few now remained who opposed Yazid, and Imam Hussein was one of them. Imam Hussein's cousin, Muslim ibn Aqil, had sent word from Kufa that the people there were ready to swear allegiance to Imam Hussein and were vowing to help him to rise up against Yazid and bring about a revolution in the Muslim lands. Yazid knew that this revolt had to be crushed immediately if he was to secure his rulership. The Battle of Karbala Imam Hussein was on his way to Kufa with his family, women, children, and around 72 others who had remained loyal to his cause. Before he could arrive, however, Yazid sent Ibn Ziyad to Kufa to quash the rebellion. Ibn Ziyad was a right-hand man of Yazid, about whom Yazid famously wrote the poem, the translation of which is such, Give me liquor that is strong enough to completely satisfy my whole being. After you have served me, turn to Ibn Ziyad and quench his thirst in the same way. He is the possessor of my secrets and trusts. In Kufa, Ibn Ziyad brutally suppressed the uprising and killed Muslim Ibn Aqil. Many of the people of Kufa changed sides, choosing to support Yazid and Ibn Ziyad's forces in Instead, many others were shaken and silenced. Yazid wrote to his newly appointed governor, News has reached me that the people of Kufa have written a letter to Al Hussein inviting him to come to them. At this very moment as I write, he is moving towards Kufa. If you kill him, then so much the better. There will remain no more duty on you. However, if you do not put him to death, I will send you to join your dead ancestors. So beware and do not lose this opportunity. Thus. As Imam Hussein and his companions continued towards Kufa, Ibn Ziyad sent some 4,000 men to counter them. His troops forced them to camp in the hot desert of Karbala, at the edge of the river Euphrates. Yazid had mustered an army of tens of thousands of heavily armed men to destroy the grandson of the Prophet and those who supported him. In 680 AD, just 61 years after the Hijra, on the 10th of Muharram, Imam Hussein and his 72 loyal comrades stood courageously against the armies of Yazid. One by one, each of them was martyred. Imam Hussein's body was trampled. The heads of the companions were set on spears, and the women and children were taken as prisoners, paraded in the streets of Kufa, a sign to any who might dare to oppose Yazid I. In Syria, the captives, including the surviving son of Imam Hussein, Imam Sajjad, were presented before Yazid and onlookers in the court of Syria. The severed heads of Imam Hussein and his comrades were also displayed before them. It was at this point in history that Yazid made his motives evident and clear. He composed poetry expressive of his glee at having taken vengeance against the Prophet of Islam, a clear announcement of apostasy. The translation of the poem is such, when those conveyances drew nigh and the heads on the edge of Jairun, the crow croaked, so said I, say whatever you wish to say or say nothing at all. The messenger this very day, what he owed me, he did repay. 
It is recorded that Jairun refers to the gate known as Jairun's Gate, which was where the head of John the Baptist was brought and hung by those who slew that great prophet of the past. Imam Hussein's head was brought to this very same place where John the Baptist's head was also brought. By composing such poetry of glee and celebration, Yazid was openly testifying his enmity towards the Ahlul Bayt as well as prophets of the past. He was also mirroring the enemies of Allah who had passed on before. It is due to these verses of poetry that some prominent personalities permitted cursing Yazid and labeling him as Kafir. Imam Hussein's head was brought to Yazid in a gold washbowl. Yazid would keep hitting the lips of Imam Hussein while saying, a day for a day, this day is in revenge for Badr. Again, these were clear words of apostasy from Yazid. The Battle of Badr was the first battle in Islamic history where the Holy Prophet and Amir 300 113 initial Muslims fought back an army of a thousand pagans of Quraysh led by Abu Jahl. Abu Sufyan, the grandfather of Yazid, had supported the enemies of the Muslims during the Battle of Badr. By declaring his vengeance for the Battle of Badr after killing Imam Hussein, Yazid was making his animosity towards the Holy Prophet, the Ahlul Bayt, and Islam very clear. It is also reported that he said, if only my ancestors who died in Badr had been alive and seen how their opponents, Ahlul Bayt of the Prophet, were suppressed, they would have screamed in joy. O oh Yazid, may your hands never tire. We have killed their leader and in this way took revenge of Badr. And I won't be eligible to be called the descendant of the fighters of the ditch if I had failed to take revenge from Muhammad and his relatives. At this point, Yazid also announced that he did not believe in the prophethood, the news sent by Allah and the divine revelation of the Quran. He also made it clear that he believed that Islam was merely a political tool used by Bani Hashim in order to have dominion over the Muslims. He declared, Hashim played with the dominion so indeed, no news from Allah came, nor was there a revelation revealed. It is in these words of poetry that Yazid made plain that he did not believe in the revelation of the Quran or in the message of Islam. When Yazid struck the lips of Imam Hussein's head, a man in the court said, I bear witness that I saw the Prophet kissing his lips and those of his brother Al Hassan and say to them, You are the masters of the youths of paradise. May Allah fight whoever fights you. May he curse him and prepare hell for him. And what an evil refuge it is. Yazid became angry and ordered him to be dragged out of his court. An old man who was among the people of Yazid saw Imam Sajjad held prisoner and mocked him saying, Praise be to Allah who annihilated you and who granted the governor, Yazid, the upper hand over you. Imam Sajjad responded by reciting some verses of the Holy Quran which all referred to the family of the Prophet. The man exclaimed saying, are you really them, i.e. the Ahlul Bayt? To which Imam Sajjad replied, By our grandfather, the Messenger of Allah, I swear that we are without any doubt. The elderly man fell on Al Sajjad's feet, kissing them and asking to be forgiven, saying, I disassociate myself before Allah from whoever fought against you. For this, Yazid had the old man executed. When Imam Sajjad, the other members of the Prophet's household and the other captives were brought before Yazid with ropes tied around their necks, Imam Sajjad announced, what do you think the reaction of the Messenger of Allah might have been had he seen us looking like this? And this caused some of the people in the court to weep. Imam Sajjad also compared Yazid to the Pharaoh and warned that even the courtiers of the Pharaoh had advised him to grant him, Musa, and his brother Harun a respite while Yazid had been urged to kill the Prophet's sons and grandsons. According to reports, this statement caused Yazid to lower his head and contemplate for a while. Attempting to justify his actions, Yazid quoted the verse, Whatever misfortunes befalls you is due to what your hands commit, insinuating that Imam Hussein's death and the death of his family members and comrades were due to his own actions. Imam Sajjad responded that the verse was actually about those who have committed oppression and not regarding those who are oppressed. He further explained, the verse was not revealed in reference to us. What was revealed in reference to us was this verse and he recited chapter 57 verse 23. Imam Sajjad turned away his face from Yazid in order to consider him worthless and lowly, a great insult to the proud king. 
By giving Yazid a bold rebuttal, Imam Sajjad was not only refuting him, but also demonstrating practically in front of the court that Imam Sajjad had unparalleled knowledge of the Qur'an, since he had inherited the knowledge from his great-grandfather, the Holy Prophet, directly from Imam Hussein and Imam Ali. Phased by this, Yazid ordered the person who used to recite the Friday sermon to ascend the pulpit and to insult Ali and al Hussein. Al-Sajjad shouted at him, saying, you have traded the pleasure of the creation for the wrath of the Creator. So take your place in the fire of hell. Imam Sajjad turned to Yazid and said, Do you permit me to ascend this pulpit to deliver a speech that will please Allah Almighty and that will bring good rewards to these people? Yazid refused, but people kept pleading to him to yield to the request. Yazid's own son, Muawiyah II, was present at the court. He told his father, Permit him. What harm can his words cause? Yazid said, These are people who have inherited knowledge and oratory and are spoon-fed with knowledge, demonstrating that he knew all too well the status of the Ahlul Bayt. Even so, under pressure from the others in the court, Yazid allowed Imam Sajjad to ascend the pulpit and address the audience. Imam Sajjad's words penetrated the hearts of those who were in the court, and many began to weep, recognizing the role that each of them had played in the massacre of the Prophet's own family. Fearing dissension, Yazid ordered the Mu'addin, the caller to prayer, to announce the Adhan in order to blot out the words of Imam Sajjad. When the words of the Adhan, I bear witness that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, were announced, however, Imam Sajjad turned to Yazid and declared, Is this great Messenger of Allah your grandfather or mine? If you say that he is yours, everyone present here, as well as all other people, will come to know that you are a liar. And if you say that he is mine, then why did you kill my father unjustly and oppressively and plunder his wealth and take his women captive? Woe unto you on the day of judgment when my grandfather will be your opponent. Commotion and raised voices followed. Some refused to pray in the court of Yazid and others left the scene.